Here I am to continue in this series of verses out of context, passages, ideas, that completely are twisted out of what the Bible is actually saying. With an effort of just looking at the passage, that's it. Nothing too fancy. And like I said, I want to move through the Old Testament all the way into the New. So now we're actually at Exodus. And, and we hit what is sometimes called generational curses. Is that actually a biblical idea? Is that really what the passage is saying? And what they base themselves on is when God says, within the Ten Commandments, in Exodus chapter 20, and in verse 5, You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. So is this a generational curse? Now please take note of at least a few things. First of all, God says he's the one who's going to visit the iniquities of the fathers on the children. So this isn't the devil. This isn't some kind of evil entity. It's God himself. Which means for those who believe in this, rebuking it in the name of Jesus is pinning the son against the father. You're using the name of, the G of Jesus to go against the father's will. Doesn't make sense. So that's the first thing. The second thing uh, is God is using clearly some kind of hyperbolic language or, you know, going to some imagery, using language that's exaggerated. Because after in verse 6, he says, but showing steadfast love to thousands, thousands of generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. Does that mean that after exactly 1,000 generations, God says, no more, we start again? No, he's using hyperbolic language. He's using exaggerations, imagery. So when he's talking about three and four, he's, he's same thing. He's just showing a, a shorter period of time compared to how much he will bless to wake the people up to either you get the blessing or you get my hand of judgment. And as you can see, my hand of blessing is way better. That's the idea here. Because when God does start talking about uh, cursing and blessing, which we'll actually look at next time in Deuteronomy, you see that he's very specific. talks about being uh, taken out of their land and brought into another land, which is exactly what happened to them. So when God wants to be specific, he is. Here, he doesn't seem to be specific. But you can still disagree with this. Here's the last point. God says he's going to visit the iniquity of the fathers. He doesn't go into any details. He doesn't say, use the word curses them. He doesn't say how the father will curse the son and so forth and so on for three to four generations. He's talking about how this iniquity, this sin, will go from the father to the son. And, and when you just stop and think about it, like biblically and logically, that is what happens. When you have a family of parents Parents who, who live a certain way, their kids inherit that. They will look at them as, as an example and follow them. Not necessarily as a curse. It's just if you have a dad who's an alcoholic, the son will learn that. One who's violent, the son will learn this. One who's a criminal, the son will usually follow in their footsteps. It's not a curse. It's just basic uh, logic of sin. Sin does that. But here's the problem. If God is really calling here, talking about a generational curse. Well, guess what? He broke it himself when he get to Ezekiel. Yeah, because in Ezekiel, God says very clearly that if a, there's a man that's living in sin and then he names a bunch of different horrible things. But he has a son who actually doesn't do that. Now you're just talking on one generation. He obeys. He won't be punished. And, but if he has a son that disobeys, as you can see, there's, there's no generational curse here. If he has a son that disobeys, well, that son is going to pay, not the father. Through Ezekiel, God's clearly saying that everybody pays for their crime. And Ezekiel is the one who, in a sense, presents this uh, new covenant in shadow form that we get in the New Testament, in the New Covenant. So even if there is, in this, this presentation of the Ten Commandments, a little bit of something of a generational curse, even though, like I said, the language doesn't work, the imagery doesn't work, but if, even if you say, no, it is, then you get to the point where Ezekiel broke it. 
so in Christ, it is definitely non-existent because everybody's responsible for themselves. You must repent and believe. There, there is no notion within the New Testament of this idea that what your parents did will cause you to be a sinner. No, you are the sinner because you are a sinner. That's it. So all that brings us to the point of saying, when you look at the text, generously Christians is not biblical. And when you study it, you find out it's it's actually from New Age. It's actually from other religion. And we're not supposed to let other religion dictate what we understand of spirituality, but the Word of God. It is our source of truth. And it is not teaching that very th idea of generational curses. Feel free to disagree. But I highly encourage you, go read the New Testament. Would would without those visors on and let it speak to you and you'll see it makes absolutely no biblical sense and that's important in christ we are individuals now with that said hopefully i didn't bother or anger anybody but just brought us back to the word i love you brothers and sisters be blessed <laughs>